Just when I thought they couldn't cram any more features into a single release after last month, Home Assistant's July release comes steamrolling in with tons of new features from new entity types, more copy and paste, new automation triggers, huge improvements to advanced features in service calls, and matter updates. Starting off with dashboards first though, however, we see continued improvement to the more info dialog box for entities. And this month it's the turn of locks. Lock entities now will display the new pop-up to bring it in line with switches, lights, alarms, and covers that all got revamps in previous releases. And it can also display a code for unlocking, a nice animation when it's toggled, and status colors when it's in the different states. You remember last month we saw the addition of copy and paste to automations, which let you go into an automation and copy a trigger, condition or action, and either paste those into a new automation or paste it somewhere else in the existing one to quickly move its position. Well, this month, copy and paste has now been added to dashboards too. This is really cool because often dashboards reuse lots of the same cards in different places, and all that's really different is the entity. So this is a really quick way to duplicate cards and build out dashboards faster. You will also notice that when you are in edit mode on your dashboard, cards now have these numbers on them which tell you the position of the card in the dashboard. Because we all know that rearranging cards in a large dashboard can be a little tedious to say the least, so this helps you figure out where the card is in position relative to other cards. And if you click the number, you can change the position by entering a new number rather than having to try and click the up and down arrows to try and get it into the right position. Definitely a time saver and a good workaround until we get something hopefully a little bit better. <coughs> Drag and drop. We also get another new card for this release too, the assist card. So as we know, this year is year of the voice and you can trigger assist using the button in the top right hand corner. But this new card allows you to add an assist button anywhere in your dashboard that can be used to trigger assist. Really useful for having on a wall tablet, for example, like the one I made a guide for in the previous video. And a nice addition is that you can have multiple cards here that are connected to different pipelines if you want to have one for different languages, for example. That's it for the dashboard stuff, but there is so much more. And a big one, or rather one that has the potential to be a really huge feature, although it is a little bit more advanced, is service calls can now respond with information. See, typically when you call a service, like you do in an automation, to turn on a light, close a blind, arm an alarm, those are typically one-way calls. You tell the service to do something and it just does the action. This release changes that by adding the ability for services to respond with data, which you can then use to do something else. Services need to be updated in Home Assistant to support this, it's not that every service in Home Assistant suddenly now has this ability to respond with information. And from speaking to the devs, this is so that they can take the time to architect this feature properly, which is definitely a good thing. As of this release, there are two services that support this right now. The conversation process service and the calendar list events service. You may wonder what this would be used for and why it is a big deal. The example given from the release notes is that you could use the calendar service to give you a list of upcoming events, then pass that into ChatGPT, which could then summarize those events and pass it back. And you can then send that as a notification to your phone or text to speech announcements. So that is just one example of something you could do with this. There's also a blueprint that has been created by Alan, which I'll link down in the description that lets you try this out if you want to see the potential that this has. Now, like I say, this is more of an advanced feature and there are only two services that support this currently, but this has some really cool potential in the future. Next up, there is a new way to trigger automations, which since it's year of the voice, naturally you can now use sentences and phrases that trigger automations with your voice. This is really cool as it bridges the gap between using voice commands and having something actually useful happen. And this opens up loads of new possibilities. Using this trigger, you can easily set the phrase or even multiple phrases. And then when you speak to assist, that automation will now run and do whatever it is you want it to do. Nice. This release also adds a new entity type. Finally, we have a dedicated entity specifically for images. In previous releases, if you wanted to show a static image in Home Assistant, such as a camera snapshot, 
This would typically be done with a workaround using a camera entity. But it wasn't technically a camera, it was a static image, so that was a little bit confusing. But this release now has a specific entity just for images. If you remember back in the June update, the integration dashboard was revamped to be more user-friendly and cleaner. And 2023.7 hones in on this even further with some subtle consistency changes based on your user feedback. Another consistency change is that scripts will now show you the option to create a new script based on a blueprint and it will show you that fancy dialogue same as automations do. Matter also gets some good updates in 2023.72 with a bunch of fixes and speed improvements, including bridges now instantly detecting changes when adding new devices, faster startup times, faster state updates, improved logging, and more, which is nice to see. You can check out the recent video I did on using Matter devices with Home Assistant if you want to see how it works and what this experience is like, but that is all pretty cool. And finally, Bluetooth proxies are even faster in Home Assistant with the latest release and the latest release of ESP Home, so much so that they reckon that they are much faster than the USB dongle attached directly to your Home Assistant server, which is, man, that's pretty cool. As for the little things this release, first up, you can now set your time zone in your user profile, which is nice if you manage instances in multiple countries, ESP Home supports alarm control panels. The Apple TV integration now supports deep links when launching apps. There is a new Assist tab in Developer Tools, which can help to parse sentences with Assist. And finally, the RoboRock integration has added cleaning area sensors and do not disturb switches. As for new integrations this release, there is five new integrations, including Locked Smart Locks and Dremel which lets you remotely control a Dremel, which makes for some pretty interesting home security weapons with like spinning disks and, no, I'm just kidding, it's a brand of 3D printer. There's also four new integrations available to set up in the UI instead of YAML. As for breaking changes in this release, there is a really small list of breaking changes and nothing major that I can see, but make sure to have a read for yourself just in case. And speaking of breaking changes, I did want to mention that the Home Assistant team has taken the decision to add a policy regarding deprecating YAML configuration, which means that any YAML configuration option that they want to remove from future Home Assistant releases must be deprecated for at least six months first. So that means that you will have a minimum of six months from a change to YAML configuration being announced to when it actually gets removed, giving you much more time to fix anything you need to which I think we can all agree is a welcome change. And that is about it for this release. This was a huge release packed full of new features. Maybe the biggest one of the year so far, if I think about it. Lots of really cool stuff to try out. Personally, I really like the sentence trigger for automations. I think that's gonna be a really good one. And the service call responses has the potential to be a really powerful feature too in the future, I think. But do let me know down in the comments which is your favorite feature from this release. The dashboard ones are also super cool. There's too many to pick from this month. That is about it from me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and get subscribed and I will see you in the next one.